Hello, everyone. This is Hikaru Nakamura. I think this is my first video that I'm doing for chess.com. Um, today, I'm going to be showing one of the games that I played in the recent London Chess Classic against Vichy Anand. It was a very important game in the tournament as I had started off quite poorly. I, I lost my first round to Wesley So with a very, very bad, um, somewhat inexplicable opening mistake. And then I drew my second game with Black against Anish Giri. Um, so in the third round, I had lost one game. I had drawn one game. And uh, it was, I really needed to start scoring and putting points on the board. So my third round opponent was Vichy Anand, who's a five-time world champion, a very, very well-known player, one of the best players, I think, in the history of chess. So here's some of the game. So the game started with d4, knight f6, c4, e6. And this is the first point of the game where I have a decision. Uh, in the game, I chose to play knight to f3. But the other option would be to play knight c3, um, and then after bishop b4, it's uh, Nimzo Indian. White has many choices. You can play queen c2, you can play a3, e3, f3, knight f3. There, there are many different options. So I chose to play knight f3, and now Vichy played d5. Um, another option would be uh, bishop b4, which is known as the Bogo Indian, or to play b6, which would be the uh, Queen's Indian. Uh, Vichy played d5, which is the most solid move. And now I played knight c3. And here he played the move knight b to d7. So there, there are a couple ideas behind this move. Nor normally if one wants to play for a queen's gambit decline, they would normally play bishop e7. And the white can play, let's say, bishop f4 or bishop to g5, for example. But the point behind knight b d7 here is that if white plays the move bishop to f4, Black has this option to play d takes c4. And in fact, in a later round against Wesley, so Vichy did just this. So after d takes c4, e3, Black has this move b5. And now after knight takes b5, bishop b4, knight c3, knight d5, a3, knight takes c3, queen d2, Vichy played the move bishop takes a3 against Wesley So, and the game ended up in a draw, but it was uh, quite an interesting game. And there have also been some other games as well with this position after queen d2 involving knight e2, a takes b4, knight f4, ef4. And this is a uh, this was the game that I had against Magnus Carlsen in the Paris Grand Chess Tour event. I lost the game, but I did have a very good position. So that's the main advantage to black playing knight bd7 on move 4 as opposed to playing, say, direct bishop b7. Because so after bishop b7, bishop f4, black can no longer take on c4 as, as white can simply play a move like e4. So Vichy played knight bd7, and here uh, I decided to take, because I had the previous games with bishop f4, and I, I assumed that um, he would be very well prepared. So I think it was the correct choice. He played e takes d5, bishop g5, and now the move bishop to b4. And all these all these different setups tend to have a mix of uh, different variations. For example, here black could also play bishop e7, and it would turn into another type of uh, queen's Indian declined, except black's knight is on d7 instead of being on b8. By playing bishop b4, it turns into a Rogozin, um, because it, the normal Rogozin order would go um, knight, knight c3, bishop b4, bishop g5, or bishop b4, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop g5, knight bd7. So, so here I played e3, h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, knight e4. And the point here is that black wants to exchange a knight for this bishop on g3. And we'll, black will then have the two bishops and also a very solid structure. So knight d2, knight takes g3. It's worth noting that if black plays knight takes c3, b takes c3, bishop takes c3, rook c1, after the move, bishop a5 to protect this pawn on c7 against the double attack from the rook and the bishop. After the move h4, white will have a very strong attack going forward despite being down a pawn here, simply due to black's open king and the lack of development of pieces on the back rank. So that's why Vichy chose to play knight takes g3 h takes g3, c6. And so basically here, the po point is black is trying to say that he has the two bishops and he has a very solid pawn structure here. For example, unlike the other position, here I no longer have these h4 ideas anymore. So, so therefore, I played a3, 
And now Vichy played the move bishop to a5, which is definitely a reasonable move. Uh, there, there are several different ways of playing. I think black can also play bishop d6, which is the most natural square for the bishop, or also bishop to f8 with the idea of putting the bishop on g7 and preventing any possible e4 breaks later on. For example, bishop d3, bishop g7, and e4 is never really possible because there will always be some sort of bishop takes d4 idea. So Vichy chose to move bishop a5, bishop to d3, and now he played the move king to f8. So basically here Vichy is trying to manually castle uh, with his king as opposed to doing it the normal way. Obviously, obviously black can't castle here because that would hang rook takes h6. Um, but by going king f8, he just simply wants to tuck his king on g7, where it will be very hard to attack it because e even though black has pushed these pawns here on the king side in front of the king, it's very hard to to break the structure. Um, and if if I play f4, which I did later in the game, there are also drawbacks as well. So I played queen to c2, knight f6, castles. It's worth noting here that white can never really castle kingside because if you try castling kingside, there will always be some some kind of attack attacking chances for black here with h5, h4, um, opening up the kingside. So I castled long instead, king g7, king b1, bishop to e6. And so here, really, the question is, is what is white trying to do? How are you going to try and play on the king side, or how are you going to try and break open the center? Here I made um, one, one decision, the first one, which was to play knight b3, essentially saying that I'm not going to be playing for e4 here. If I want to play e4, it's always possible, but I have to be very careful because the structure can also be unfavorable as well. For example, let's say bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, bishop d5, and now I'm, now I'm going to have this isolated um, pawn on d4, which is blockaded by this bishop on d5 and possibly a queen and a rook later on. And at the same time, Long term, I also have these double pawns here on g3 and g2, which also is uh, a liability in, in, in an end game potentially. So therefore, I played knight to b3, bishop b6, and here I played the move f4, which when I, when I was calculating during the game, I used a lot of time on this move, and I, I was trying to figure out what the, what the best move was. The, the two moves that I really considered here were f4 and f3. And in retrospect, I probably should have played f3. Um, the point being that after f3, it gives me many different possibilities, and I still have some flexibility. So e4 might be possible later on, but also g4 might be possible with some kind of knight to e2, knight g3, knight f5, or knight h5. And if I can get the knight to either of those squares, I'm going to get some attacking chances for sure. So in the game, I played f4, and here I, I underestimated how strong uh, the next move was for black. I simply thought that uh, bishop g4 had to be too slow because it was just, I mean, black's previous move was bishop c8 to e6. So to go from bishop e6 to g4, it felt like it was losing a tempo and it would only help me improve my position. But in fact, bishop g4 is a very good move for a very simple fact that it prevents me from playing this move f5. So for example, if black played something more normal like queen d6, I could play something like f5, bishop d7, and possibly e4 now. And unlike the previous position, after d takes e4, knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop e4, I'm now threatening to play d5 and get rid of my isolated pawn. And also I might have ideas like queen c3 and playing along this, this a1, h8 diagonal against black's king. So bishop g4 was uh, was a very good move by, by Vichy. Now I played rook d to e1. And this is another situation where it's very hard um, to decide what to do. Because originally I wanted to play rook d to f1. Um, because there were, there were some, some tricks that I started seeing. Like, for example, after queen to e7, um, there's this very... Or actually not on this move, but queen f2, rook a e8 attacking this pawn on e3, and now I saw this idea with rook takes h6, which is really quite beautiful, but unfortunately it doesn't quite work, because after rook takes h6, first of all, black can, I think, play queen takes e3, but also black can play rook takes h6, f takes g5, queen takes e3. And now if I take on h6, his queen takes h6, and 
I no longer have an attack. And actually here, I'm my structure is even worse now. And black is probably better simply because I have no attack. And he'll be able to do something along the E file as well as controlling squares on on this uh, G4 D1 diagonal, and also probably being able to um, keep pressure on this pawn on D4. It's also worth noting that in this position, after Rook takes H6, Black cannot go King takes H6, because after F takes G5, if King takes G5, then Queen F4, King H5, and now Rook H1, Bishop H3, Rook takes H3, and uh, Black is checkmated. And also after king h6, fg5, king g7, then g takes f6, and there's a fork on the king and the queen, and um, uh, black's just going to lose a lot of material. So I really wanted to play this this rook df1 move, but when I saw that the complications weren't working out, I decided to go rook de1, queen d6, rook hf1, rook ae8, and now I played a move that um, that probably was a blunder. But I, I kind of miscalculated, and I was very lucky I didn't get punished for it, because I played this move knight to c5, and it was based on a rather uh, serious miscalculation a couple moves down the road. So um, after knight c5, rook e7, the, the problem here is that now this, this knight's under attack. So like if, if black were to, say, play bishop takes c5, d takes c5, queen c5, then I could play f takes g5, h takes g5, and there's this very nice tactic with rook takes f6, king takes f6, and knight to e4, creating discovery on the on the queen. So d takes e4, queen takes c5, he takes d3, queen d4. And and now black is going to lose material after king f5 and rook f1. Black can't keep the bishop on g4 any longer. So so I saw this tactic, but then after rook e7, um, I realized that kind of it, it's very hard to play now because I have to do something here. Black is threatening to take the knight on c5. Black also, um, if I play something like b4 to protect the knight, black probably now is a5. And if the queen side starts opening up, uh, my king is going to be in, in grave danger, especially because I don't have any direct attacks right away against the black king here on g7. It's very Black's structure is very, very solid. So I played the move queen to d2, which, which is a blunder. Originally, my, my plan was to play queen c1. The same idea being, of course, it takes takes queen c5 i have f takes g5 h takes g5 rook f6 uh but then after queen c1 i saw that black has this idea bishop takes c5 d takes c5 queen takes c5 f takes g5 and now he's just move knight to e4 position is still probably about even i would say even here but i played this move queen d2 and it was based on a, a big miscalculation um i saw that after this move bishop takes c5 d takes c5 queen takes c5 um, that I no longer had these these ideas with f takes g5, h g5, and rook f6 because my queen is on d2, not c1. So I'm not attacking his queen on c5. However, I, I simply forgot that after this move e4 here, black can just quite simply take on e4, and uh, none, none of the tactics quite work out. For example, rook takes f6, king takes f6, knight takes e4, rook e4, rook takes e4, and, for example, black has rook to a1. And now if I go king a2, bishop e6, check, b3. And there, there are many different ways of continuing here, but I think probably the simplest would be just to play queen c1. And um, black is now up a pawn. Queens are going to come off the board. And I also have these double pawns on g2 and g3. So black should be technically winning at this point. So I was very lucky because, in fact, here Vichy blundered. He played rook hg8 instead of playing bishop takes c5. Um, what, what he told me after the game was that he was he was kind of worried about some sort of uh, some sort of idea with knight to a4, queen d6, and, and something like queen c3 or uh, bishop c2 here. Once it, with the idea of going for queen d4 and, and trying to put pressure along this diagonal. However, I think that very simply c5 here should be fine, or even just uh, rook to d8. And and now if I play queen d4, I think black can play b6 or, or b5, one, one of the two. Um, but but basically, I, I realize at the board that this, this could be a, a big problem. And in fact, actually, even knight e4 here also is probably quite quite reasonable. So... I realized at the board that I had made a mistake, but fortunately, Vichy, after a long thought, I might add, he uh, he played rookie eight. And I think he just um, he, he just 
I'm not quite sure what he missed within this variation, uh, because after fg5, hg5, e4, everything becomes very forcing. So knight takes e4. And here, actually, I, I took with the wrong piece here. I played knight 5 takes e4, whereas, in fact, knight 3 takes e4 is much stronger, because after d takes e4, rook takes e4, rook takes e4, knight takes e4. After queen g6, we've transposed to the game. But a big difference here is that with my knight being on c5 as opposed to c3 in the game, after the move bishop to h5, I think simply queen takes g5, bishop g6, and, and rook h4 is just crushing some threatening threatening mate. So I, during the game, I simply thought that it made no difference which, which knight I took with, whereas in fact it makes a big difference because here after rook takes e4, now black does have bishop h5. And... The, the point being that with the knight on c3, it's um, a lot less effective. For example, queen g5, bishop g6, rook h4. Now I think black has rook e1, rook takes e1, rook takes e1, king c2. And here, for example, I think after a move like... Actually, I have to be careful here. After a move like bishop takes d4... Black should be okay here. I'm not certain of that, but I, th I know that the black was, was doing completely fine if he had played bishop h5 instead of rook takes e4. Because now after rook takes e4, uh, we transpose to the other line, but this endgame is, is slightly worse for black. So queen g6, knight f6, creating a discovery on the queen with the bishop. So queen takes f6 is the only move. Rook takes f6, king f6. And now at this point in the game, really the only question is, is there some way to create a weakness against these queenside pawns? Because, for example, in this position, if I just play some random moves, um, if black were able to, say, get this position with a bishop on d5, then it's almost certain that black can hold a draw. And I, I don't think black is even in real, real danger of losing here. So really the only question here is if there's a way to exchange this d-pawn for, let's say, the c-pawn and try and create something along these... Uh, against these, these 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 pawn islands, all these weak pawns everywhere. Because black's bishops are, are okay, but the bishop on g4 is loose. The king's a little bit loose. Um, so that's why I played queen c3 to create this discovery. Now here, Vichy played bishop d7, d5, rook to e5. Now I played bishop to e4. Um, if I were to take after d takes c6, bishop takes c6, black, black is doing great. The, the bishops are are very solid, they're protected, they, they aren't loose at all, and I can't attack this this rook or, and the king just protects it, so black is fine. So I played bishop to e4. Now here Vichy played g4, d takes c6, b takes c6, bishop c6, takes, takes. Now he played king g5, which is a, a slightly unusual move. Um, I think I probably would have played king to g7 here, personally, but... I understand why he went to g5. The danger, of course, by going to g5 is now it's very likely there won't be any fortresses here because, let's say, after queen d7, you can't just play f5 because of queen g7 check picking up the rook. So by putting the king on g5, uh, it's it's a lot harder to set up a fortress, and I, I think now it's probably, in fact, just close to lost. So this you played rook e3, queen takes f7, rook takes g3, Queen to d5, which actually I think was slightly wrong in the game. Because after king h4, a4, uh, Vichy blundered with bishop f2 here. But he could also have played the move rook to e3, because now if I play a5, rook e1, king a2, he has the move bishop f2. And this is another try at setting up some kind of a fortress. For example, say b4, maybe he can play g3, b5, and... It's probably just lost, but everything is, of course, uh, supported by something here. So... It is probably is losing, but maybe there's there's some some try. Nevertheless, Vichy played bishop f2, and after queen d8, king h5, uh, I have this little staircase where I just keep checking the king around. Queen e8, king g5, queen e5, king g6, and now queen to f4. And here Vichy resigned simply because I'm attacking the bishop. Um, if the bishop move, bishop, the only square bishop can move to without uh, hanging the rook on g3 would be e1. And after bishop e1, I play queen e4 check, um, picking up the bishop on e1. And if he plays rook takes g2, I once again play queen e4, forking the king and the rook. 
and and so therefore Vichy resigned. So the game was not perfect. There were definitely some mistakes, but in the, in the middle game it was uh, it was a very interesting struggle. We both had our chances, and I think um, it's it's very important to to notice the pawn structure because in this game I played the move f2 to f4. Um, f3 would have been a better move by playing f4. I really committed myself to going sort of all in. I mean the pawn structure became pretty irrelevant after that, and so. It was just uh, trying trying to make make the attack work, but at the same time, it created weaknesses like the pawn on e3. So it was definitely um, an interesting game, and I hope that uh, for all the premium members at Chess.com enjoyed the game, and hopefully, I'll be back to do more videos soon.